Michael Burry is one of the most successful investors of the last two decades. And while you've probably heard of him from his incredible short of the real estate market in 2008, where he correctly called the nation's first ever real estate crash that started the Great Recession, where he made himself a nice $100 million profit for his effort. But this guy is more than just lucky. He also predicted the dot-com crash of the early 2000s, and he was the investor most directly responsible for kicking off GameStop's rise, where he made a nice $100 million profit from that as well. And because Burry operated his own fund, Scion Asset Management, we can see exactly what positions he is currently holding in his portfolio. So hey everyone and welcome to FinTech. And in this video, I'm going to go through Burry's stock portfolio going into 2022, look at his most recent trades, and look at his overall performance over the last few years. And at the end of the video, we'll also do a bonus comparison to Kathy Wood's holdings and performance in 2021 as well, since she's another celebrity investor who has had a very public disagreement with Michael Burry. Now all this information information is being pulled from Burry's 13F filing, which he has to do every three months. So this filing is only going to include information on Burry's US stocks, and all the data is going to be around six weeks old to help protect his privacy. Now it won't include information on any short positions he might have, but there's still plenty of valuable information in here for the smart investor. And there are little pieces that we can borrow from that for our own investment strategies. So hit the like button if you want, and let's start taking a look at Burry's portfolio. So this pie chart here represents Michael Burry's entire US stock portfolio. And you may be surprised that while Burry's portfolio at its peak had over $2 billion in assets under management, it only currently has six stocks in the entire thing. You can see here how they're broken down by different sectors. So the largest single sector is in finance, which is just over a third. Then he has around a third in industrials and then about a quarter in healthcare with the remaining coming from real estate. This is a huge change from how this has looked in previous quarters where a much larger percent of it came from industrials or for example, where consumer staples made up a large percentage of his portfolio. In fact, right now, Michael Burry doesn't have any consumer products or technology stocks in his portfolio whatsoever. In fact, the companies he does hold aren't ones that appear a lot if you follow investing related news, and chances are you've probably only heard of one or two of them. So if we pull back up that list of all his different stocks in the pie chart, we can see that his largest position overall is Bristol Myers Squibb, which if you don't know, is one of the largest pharmaceutical companies in the world. After that, we have Fidelity National Financial, which you should not confuse with Fidelity the broker. And then third up is General Dynamics, which competes in the defense and aerospace industry. And just between those three largest positions, that makes up nearly 75% of Burry's overall portfolio. But as interesting as it is to look at his six largest positions, it's also also interesting to look at what trades he's made recently. And in the last quarter, he has closed out of four of his previous positions, including CVS, Sinex, Lockheed Martin, and Now Incorporated. And some of those are some huge trades, considering CVS last quarter made up nearly 40% of his entire portfolio, and Lockheed Martin was at nearly 25% of the entire portfolio. So clearly Burry's not afraid of making some pretty big moves. But in addition to the four positions that Burry sold out of completely, he also reduced one of his existing positions without selling out completely. Completely. And that is Geo, which is now 26% smaller than the previous position he held in it. Now, Geo is a REIT or a real estate investment trust that specializes in the ownership, leasing, management of correctional detention and reentry facilities across the US, basically US prisons. And in addition to that position that he decreased, he increased his position in CXW by 34%. And CXW operates in a very similar business to Geo. CXW, also known as Core Civic, is a company that owns and manages prisons again across the US. US. So Burry's just moving money from one prison system manager to another. And then in addition to those trades, Burry also opened four brand new positions over the past quarter. So that includes AEA Bridges Impact Court, General Dynamics Corp, Fidelity National Financial, and Bristol Myers Squibb. So Burry's been pretty active in his portfolio over the past three months, selling out of his largest positions and completely entering new ones. So clearly he's not afraid to move quickly. But now let's look at Burry's overall portfolio performance over the past year. Now we can roughly approximate this by looking at his total assets under management over time. So we can see that between 2019 and 2020, he generally didn't increase his assets under management that quickly. But then between Q4 2020 and Q1 2021, his assets under management absolutely exploded, going from around $224 million to $1.3 billion. This is even more impressive given that most portfolio managers at the same time were actually losing money. Although this is also around the time that the GameStop craze was happening, so I wonder how much that might have contributed to that rise. But then Burry continued to grow 
his assets under management through Q2 2021 before suddenly selling off the large majority of the assets. And now he's down to just under $75 million worth of assets under management. Now, this isn't because Burry suddenly had all of his stocks crash on him and he lost all that money. Most of it is due to him actually pulling money out of the market to hold in other assets instead. And this goes along with a lot of the tweets he's made saying that the stock market in general is overvalued and his worries about the Fed continually increasing inflation and basically causing an economic bubble. But in order to remove some of that noise around him adding or removing assets to his fund, we can look at this chart here, which compares his return from around March of 2020 up until now versus the S&P 500. And we can see that up through that time, Burry is up around 250% versus the S&P 500 79% rise. And while you might say that there are a lot of investors who have kind of had really high returns like that, especially those being driven by technology stocks, Burry has mostly been avoiding technology stocks like the plague. He's done this without having to resort to those high growth, higher risk stocks that a lot of people have been investing in. But I also said I would compare Burry's returns to another famous investor, Kathy Wood. Now, Kathy Wood in the past has had some fairly public disagreements with Michael Burry, who has publicly said that at one point he was shorting her fund, ARK Invest. So it'll be interesting to compare how her portfolio differs. Now, first off, unlike Michael Burry, Kathy Wood has quite a few stocks in her portfolio. In total, it looks like she has around 374 right now. And her assets are actually much less concentrated than Burry, with her largest position, Tesla, only making up 6% of her portfolio and Teladoc after that making up 5%, compared to Burry stocks where he had 25% in one position. That being said, Kathy Wood also has way more assets under management in US stocks. Currently, it's sitting at $33 billion in total. And her portfolio, while it is being criticized by many as being overexposed to innovation and technology stocks, is actually more diversified than Michael Burry's right now, at least. She has a huge amount of money in information technology and then followed by healthcare. Then she has a smaller amount in communications followed by consumer discretionary finance and then small positions in other and a tiny position in utilities and telecommunications. And she hasn't been nearly as aggressive as Michael Burry in moving percentage allocations of her portfolio around. So she's only purchased 75 new stocks over the past three months, which is actually a fairly high number of stocks compared to your average fund manager, but it's obviously lower than Burry buying, what, two thirds of his portfolio in the past two months. She's added to 90 stocks, sold out of 13 stocks, and reduced holdings in 190 stocks. And in total, her top 10 holdings only make up 40% of her portfolio. Versus with Burry, he only has six holdings overall. But now the most important thing, how has she performed over the same time period as Michael Burry? Well, if we go back to March of 2020 and I'll look up until now, we can obviously see that at her peak, she had made a huge return in the market, up 192%. But since that time, she's had a lot of assets kind of flow out of her fund, which makes sense because over the year of 2021, Kathy Wood actually had negative returns. Whereas if someone had just put money into the S&P 500, they would have made around 20% during that same time. Now, I'm not saying that this makes Michael Burry automatically a better investor than Kathy Wood or vice versa. This is obviously too short of a time period to really tell. But I just think it's interesting to compare and contrast different investing styles from two different investors who have, by all accounts, been very successful over their careers. And I think that there are lessons we can take from both of them in terms of their portfolios. Obviously, both of them are willing to be aggressive when they need to and are willing to change up the positions they hold when one of their theses have proven wrong. Additionally, both of these investors, I do believe, are playing the long game overall. So even though they might be down one year, they keep on holding on to the fact that over a five or 10 year period, they at least believe that their thesis is going to play out and become profitable. But let me know in the comments how many of Michael Burry's companies you'd actually heard of before this video. I'll tell you my number, it was two. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.